There are in fact two ways that you can declare parameters in object Pascal. One is the standard way, and you can see that here, where I've just indicated the parameter name and its type. So let's have a look at this. This is a very simple example. This button one click function down here simply declares a string variable S1 and it assigns it the string hello world. It then calls my procedure up here, which also has a parameter, also called S1, but it could be called something else. And that appends these exclamation marks to S1. And finally, back in button one click, I show a message and I display the value of S1. So let's just verify what the results of that are. I'm compiling it, I run it, and it shows hello world, but notice without the exclamation marks. So even though I've got two identifiers, both called S1, they are different things. The one in my button one click uh, function sets up a value of hello world. The one in the my proc function appends the exclamation marks to it, but back in button one click no change has occurred to the S1 variable. So the S1 in button one click is a local variable. It has a scope inside button one click. The S1 parameter in my proc is also local to that procedure. And the two do not affect one another. So although I've appended ex exclamation marks up here, those exclamation marks when I run it as you'll see, they are not appended to the S1 variable inside button one click. So what's happened? What's happened is that a copy has been made of the original variable, and it's that copy that is changed inside my proc. So although the S1 value received up here is hello world, that's what's sent to it by button one click, when the string is changed when it's had these extra exclamation marks appended, no change occurs back in button one click. It only affects the local copy in my proc. Okay, let's make a small change here. I'm going to add the var keyword. That's all I've done. The rest of the program is identical. Now let's run it again. Build it. Click the button. And this time the exclamation marks are shown. So this time, S1 down here has in fact been changed when a change is made to the S1 parameter. So what's happened? When I put in the var keyword up here, the parameter is treated as a reference to the original variable that was sent to the procedure. It's no longer a copy it actually points to the original bit of data. So that's called passing an argument by reference. Without the var keyword, I pass it by value. So the value is sent now. That is the string. But it's a different data item. It does not affect the original when I make changes. But when I have the var keyword there, the argument is passed by reference so that the local parameter actually refers to the original variable and changes made to the parameter are also made to the original variable. Let's look at another example. This is a project that you find in the code archive. It's called varparam. And here's my form. It's just got a memo and a go button on it. When I click Go, this is what executes. I have six integer variables in button one click. Each of them is assigned an integer from one to six. Here, I call memo.lines.add, followed by the format function to add a display of the numbered variables to the memo. The format function simply copies the uh, variables, these six variables, into this string using these place markers. So this copies the first variable, 
this substitutes the second variable or the value of that variable and so on into the string. So the end result is I display the values of n1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and then 6 in the memo. Then I call this function medal. So this just messes around with the variables. I pass the six arguments and look the first three are preceded by the var keyword. So a reference to the original variables has been passed here. So any changes inside medal change the original variables back in button one click. Then there's a semicolon to divide that parameter list from the next three parameters. These integers are passed in the normal way. They are passed by value. That means that the values are copied into new parameters. So num4, num5, num6 have the data that was sent to them. That's the integer values. But they are local parameters. They have no reference to the original variables. Whereas num1, num2, num3 refer to the original variables. They're not copies. They are actually pointers to references to the original variables. And any changes made to the first three arguments should, in fact, change the original variables that were sent to them. So finally, down here, I just once again display the variables in the memo. So let's see this in action. Right, and you can see here that n1, n2, and n3 have been changed after the call to the medal function. Let's compare the original code down here so you can see this more clearly. But the next three arguments, n4, n5, and n6, have not been changed. And that's entirely due to this single keyword here, var. Var, remember, says that these parameters are references to, they point to, the original variables. So any changes made inside that function on var parameters will affect the original variables, whereas those parameters that are not preceded by the var keyword are passed by value. They are copies of the original data, but they do not refer to the original variables. So when changes are made inside the medal procedure, no changes will be made to the original variables. So that's a very important distinction to understand between var parameters that are passed by reference and non-var parameters by value parameters which are passed by value and are copies.